Y otros. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, my name is Dewan Jiro. And perhaps before we proceed to the next session, uh, my learned uh, senior counsel, Paul Moite, did raise an issue that we have an objection in terms of the appearances of legal counsel appearing for the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, sir, our objection is in line with the conduct of this House and the records bear as witness that we also have, um, we'll also be relying on an authority in our objection. Mr. Speaker, sir, we are raising an objection to the appearance of, senior, of my senior advocate, legal counsel, James Orengo, to represent the National Assembly in these proceedings. And this is the basis of our objection briefly, that my learned friend, senior James Orengo, is a full-time serving state officer as per Article 260 of the Constitution, as read together with Section 26, Subsection 2 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, which bars a full-time state officer from engaging in meaningful uh, employment. Mr. Speaker, sir, it will be prejudicial to our client if this house was to allow my learned friend, senior James Orengo, to present the National Assembly in these proceedings. Mr. Speaker, sir, just recently, this house, which is a house of record, we bear us witness that during the impeachment of the deputy governor of Kisi County, the county assembly attempted to appear by, an, by legal counsel represented by one honorable sorrow. An objection was raised by my learned friend, Senator Chargay, which objection was sustained by this house. Mr. Speaker, sir, our objection is further premised in the High Court decision, that is High Court uh, Constitution of Petition 204 of 2019, where Justice Ogola barred his Excellency, the Governor of Siaya County, from representing the then Director General of Kenya Port Authority, one Daniel Maduk. The judgment is before this honorable, court, uh, honorable house that a person who is engaged in full-time employment cannot then purport to appear and represent a party before this assembly. It will raise serious conflict of interests the same will prejudice our client, and it's also in violation of clear provisions of the law as cited. In that respect, Mr. Speaker, sir, we invite you to uphold our objection before the charges are read out to, the, um, uh, to our client. Mr. Speaker, sir, in this ruling that I've just cited, was of the view that a person who is engaged in, uh, in full-time engagement as a state officer cannot and is barred from representing a party in a private capacity. We so beseech you, Mr. Speaker, sir, to uphold our objection. I am most humbled. Council for the uh, National Assembly, if you look at uh, our program, the
the preliminary objections were to be raised after His Excellency has taken plea. And therefore, we'll allow the clerk to read the charges. Before anything else, I will allow the uh, Council for the National Assembly to respond, and therefore, I will make my ruling, and then we'll take it from there. I am most obliged, Mr. Speaker, sir.